Welcome back to Book View Now, our coverage of the Miami Book Fair. I'm Jeffrey Brown of the PBS NewsHour, and I am joined now by Diane Roberts. Her new book is Tribal, College Football, and the Secret Heart of America. Welcome. Thank you. We're talking on Sunday, so it's professional football day. It is. Yesterday, though, I, like probably millions, watched some college football. You call it tribal. In what sense? In the sense that we all belong to these little groups or clans, clans with a C, I hasten to add, uh, that separate themselves into uh, a whole identity group. So instead of saying, I'm a Georgia fan or I'm a Gator fan, you say, I'm a Bulldog or mm -hmm. I am a Gator. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's rather biologically suspect, but it is how we think of it. And we're always choosing teams in mm -hmm. life. We choose, you know, every day to belong to a political team, a social team. Uh, you know, some teams we don't choose, our class team, our educational team. But football teams are just like that. Mm -hmm. And anything that people love this much I thought was worthy of some kind of, I say, serious consideration, though it's supposed to be a funny book, mostly. Yes. Mostly, mostly, but not completely. No. I mean, but, because, but this is also through family, you know, passed down. Oh, right? yes. And in your case, I inherited it. You inherited the tradition, you inherited <laughs> mm -hmm. seats, everything. I inherited right? seats, yeah. yes. This is not at all unusual. Yeah. I know more people. In your people, case, we should say it's yes, Florida, Florida State. Florida State right? Seminoles, yeah. yes, indeed. Yeah. The, the yeah. team that puts me through hell every single week in the fall. Because. You know, because they almost lose, and sometimes they do lose. And, you know, and I've just, I was raised Presbyterian, so I think, well, suffering is ennobling. Suffering is good for you. Yeah. This life is a veil of tears. and. You know, and they can't get the ground game going, so, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, let's start with the love part of that. Yeah. What, what do you love about it, about this tribalism? Well, the, the tribalism itself is hard to love, but the, the ritual is wonderful. Yeah. The way that it connects um, millions of us to our parents, our grandparents, in many cases, great-grandparents, the way it connects us to a geographical location. I mean, many people say in the state of Alabama didn't go to either Alabama or Auburn, but they choose a team. Mm. And so their, their de facto capital, their psychic capital is I mean, Tuscaloosa I, or yeah, Auburn. Yeah, and I find that, you know, on our program, we're constantly talking about globalization and the yes. end of identities, but you... Of oh, course. I don't think it. I don't think it's yeah. happening. It, in yeah. a way, it's happening. Yeah. I mean, we are living in a world of global capitalism and global media, right. but we're not living in an era of global tribalism in the right. same way. We still have our little tiny, our village culture, and our village culture might be, you know, the Georgia Bulldogs, the Florida State Seminoles, the Ole Miss Rebels, whatever. And these things are hugely important to mm -hmm. millions and millions of people. So much of this very positive side to our life, but you're also looking at a sport that has had all kinds of problems, oh, gosh. that raises all kinds of questions about whether it should exist, how it should exist, the role of players, whether they're being used, oh, yes. abused, etc. And you write about that. Yes, I do, because I think we're going to have to change the game. I don't know how soon. Uh, I don't know what has to happen. I don't know if it will be lawsuits, probably, because it's like everything in America, it's about money. Mm -hmm. And once the money starts to get attacked, um, you know, if, if a bunch of players decide to sue, that's actually already happening. Mm -hmm. Or if, say, parents decide to sue uh, the NCAA over not protecting their children, or maybe a university over not protecting mm -hmm. their children. We now know a lot more about brain disorders than we did, and we know that subconcussive hits over and over and over again are not good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the similar principle of why you don't shake a baby. Well, you know, if you're, even if you're a 19, 20 year old, guy and you weigh 300 pounds, mm -hmm. you're shaking your brain, you're getting hit in the head all the time. You know, a lot of the problems of college football have been known for a long time, but I want, do you think they have worsened, grown? People are bigger and faster. Mm -hmm. So in the sense that instead of being hit by a Great Dane, if you're on the field, now you're being hit by, you know, a refrigerator truck. These guys are enormous and they're quick. So yeah, it's a problem. I've talked to a lot of people that played in the 60s and 70s and they just said, my God, I'd be killed out there. Mm -hmm. And I think that the money is a problem. I think that well, the players not being compensated yeah. is a big but, problem. But the, the money part of it that has become so important to universities, mm -hmm. right? What therefore the, the sports programs, especially football, 
become ever more important within the life of the university. Absolutely. Good and bad again. Television money, yeah. uh, booster yeah. money, yeah. Um, you know, the, the fanciest building, bar none, in Tallahassee is uh, in the stadium. The stadium has these very luxurious sky boxes. Yeah. And I think that that tells you something, that we are willing to spend millions and millions and millions, most of it private money, on this, um, but there's a great deal of fussing about building a homeless shelter, for example. Mm. You know, nobody loves the homeless and everybody loves the Seminoles. So it's a kind of weird American disconnect that mm -hmm. somehow these kids represent us. That's really interesting to me. And the role of the coaches who oh. become more famous because they're there longer. In most and the highest they're... paid person the in highest, the state yes, in, yeah. in terms of a, an alleged public official. I mean, most of their salaries are privately funded. But right. yeah, you know, the football coach makes, I don't know, at, at Florida State, four or five million a year. At the University of Alabama, it's closer to seven million a year. Yeah. It's quite astonishing. At Florida State, of course, the famous case, the most famous player became the most famous case, yes. James Winston, now a professional football mm -hmm. player, but under great suspicion yes. at Florida State. Well, tell us about that. Well, this is a sad case in every way because um, there are two young people involved in this and one of them, I don't know which, is not getting justice. They will both live under this cloud for the rest of their lives, the young woman involved and Jameis Winston. Mm -hmm. Who and a, a rape. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. She accused him mm -hmm. of raping her. Um, their, the investigation was slapdash and mm -hmm. extremely casual, which may tell you about the relationship between the football program and the local police, which I think we don't approve of much. It's not a good, a good healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, by the time the state's attorney got involved, it was too late. Most, a great deal of evidence was just gone or destroyed or it was too late, something. Mm -hmm. And so neither of them is getting really what they're due, either, either justice or exoneration. Mm -hmm. And I think that's hugely sad and it happens often in football towns. It's, it's Florida State, it's all across the country, mm -hmm. you know, from here to Montana. Do you think when you look at all of these, you've talked about health issues, money issues, criminal case, potential criminal cases, mm -hmm. with all these problems, is it possible to maintain the game? It, oh, sure it is, because yeah. it's still worth um, billions of dollars a year. Yeah. But is it possible to maintain it in a, a way that you would like to see it, and many would like to see I think, it? I think, I hope, let's yeah. say, rather than I think, but I hope that what we can do is find a way to lessen the physical uh, attack on the body. I mean, there must be a way to, to hit without so much jarring. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not positive that that's, that's true it may become something that's increasingly gladiatorial and that we make people sign releases saying, yes, I know I may be you know, completely out of my mind by the age of 45, but I still want to do this. And paying players? We're going to have to give them something. We don't even give them so far the full price of their mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. These are guys who can't buy clothes uh, that don't have a swoosh or something on them because they're, they're given clothes. Mm -hmm. They can't go for a meal in a place that's not the uh, team dining hall. Uh, they can't take their girlfriends out for a movie. I think it's just terrible that they they have nothing except this game. They're not allowed to work because they got to go to practice. They mm -hmm. got to do strength training. But where will the pressure in the end have to come from to make the changes? Because you've outlined all these reasons why it won't change. I think it will be the parents. parents? and I, Parents and players themselves. Yeah. Um, I like to see players banding together. One of the reasons that I was kind of proud of the University of Missouri team is that they, they said, no, we're not going to play. And it was not something about themselves. It was something for someone else. Mm -hmm. They saw this as, as a way to exert pressure on their own university. I'd like to see players maybe exerting pressure maybe on their own behalf and saying, look, we want some rule changes so that we don't get uh, the whatnot beat out of us every single time. I don't know what that'd do for their pro prospects, but maybe it would uh, bode well for their brain prospects down the line, and maybe they could live into a ripe old age and know their own names and those of their children and their grandchildren. All right, a portrait of uh, college football, good and bad, right? Diane Roberts is the author of Tribal, College Football and the Secret Heart of America. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.